Hey guys, it's John here coming to you with a Disney Store Sleeping Beauty review. Here I have for you today, Aurora. So let's jump right in and have a closer look at her packaging. Packaging wise, Aurora comes in a pink windowed plastic slick box with a cardboard backing which shows a very faint image of King Stefan's throne. Of course, we have the Disney Store logo at the top corner and Aurora's name at the bottom in a crown heart surrounded by yellow filigree swirls with pink and white gems outlining the border of the packaging itself which also has little sparkle, circle and heart decals all over. The back of the packaging displays the Disney Princess logo, a faint background image of King Stefan's castle, and the Disney Store Aurora classic doll herself. So now let's jump right in and have a closer look at this Sleeping Beauty herself. So here we have Aurora right out of packaging looking as pretty as ever in her signature pink evening gown. Face wise, Aurora looks stunning with her refined face, piercing violet eyes which are side glancing to the left in Disney store tradition, shimmering light makeup, rosy cheeks and hot pink lips. I have to say this head sculpt is brilliant. By making Aurora's face less rounded much like Snow White or Cinderella sculpt but instead more defined, this gives Aurora an appearance of maturity rather than youth much like her original on screen counterpart. It's as well nice to see Disney store making an effort with accuracy by giving Aurora a dark shade of pink for her lips. It's definitely not the lips that shame the red rose just yet, but at least it's slowly getting there. As for hair, Aurora is magically blessed with wavy waist length golden locks like sunshine, which as well sports her iconic fringe with a large curl on the left side of her forehead. The hair itself is nicely curled, with the main curls residing towards the bottom ends of her hair much like her appearance in the movie. Much of it does have some kind of hair product in it though, which on one hand does help hold the curls and wavy look nicely, but on the other hand gives off an overly gelled look especially seen in her fringe, feeling a little hard and crunchy when touching the hair itself, as well as needing some major maintenance when taken out of the packaging due to the hair's original default box position, being split down the middle and displayed laying down over her shoulders. Moving down to clothing, Aurora is donning her signature evening gown which consists of her golden royal tiara and necklace, a pink evening gown with hot pink glittering filigree swell flower leaves and sparkle decals at the bottom section with pink gem accents, white pointed shoulder designs, long triangular sleeves, a triangular petal overskirt and of course a pair of hot pink flats. Overall, the outfit is extremely nice, hitting the nail on the head on all of the elements seen on her original design. The only negative part I can say about this outfit is the lack of stitching and hemming detailing on the bodice and triangular petal overskirt, which compared to the rest of the clothing pieces looks quite cheap. Other than that though, I'm totally digging Aurora's look. The basic gown itself is very pretty with the hot pink filigree patterns and gems sprinkled onto the dress. The flower and leaves design is also a nice fit for Aurora which is a plus. The whole outfit has minimal glitter which I love and the glitter that is present is contained to the bottom of the gown's filigree swell, flower, leaves and sparkle decals that go all the way around the skirt matching Aurora's packaging border tying in the 2015 theme together. The glitter itself is not too shabby either since it seems to not shed at all unlike the ones on previous year's dolls. Aurora's dress gifted to her by the three good fairies Flora, Fauna and Meriwether has always been quite a simple design with the main feature of it usually being the colour choice. And I'm guessing Flora got her way this time since the dress is a vibrant hot pink. It definitely would have been nice to see Disney Store changing things up once in a while with a blue version but unfortunately 2015 is just not the year for Meriwether. Comparison wise, standing next to my custom Disney Store Aurora that I've mixed and matched to get as movie accurate as possible, which now consists of a 2013 head with tiara, 2012 body and 2012 classic film collection 10 pack dress, necklace and high heels. The Aurora 2015 classic doll shares a lot of similarities like the exact same tiara and necklace and a few others such as her overall body minus the articulated legs. Saying that though, most similarities do now appear with slight 
slight changes such as the face paint which is basically the same apart from her lips which is now a darker shade of pink, her hairstyle which is the same overall style though now with just more prominent hard curls compared to the soft loose ones and the basic outfit itself which has added filigree and gem accents on the gown itself with even further differences such as the overall outfit now being a hot pink next to the lighter shade of the 2012 dress. The bodice has different stitching details at the front with two lines going down the bodice on either side compared to the movie accurate three lines going down and meeting at one point at the bottom which the former also has. Aurora's pedal overskirt now appears to lack hemming detailing. And lastly she now wears hot pink flats compared to the lighter pink high heels. All in all, there have been very slight changes made to Aurora this year with only a handful of things being noticeable. I have noticed that certain little changes to Aurora's evening gown does appear to be a step back, though then again they are just very minor points. Now being able to compare the new Disney Store Aurora 2015 classic doll to my custom, it's kind of strange to see how little slight tweaks to a doll's appearance can make her look quite different. With all of these minor changes, Aurora's look now conveys a stronger presence with the more defined larger curled hair, darker colour palette and popping decals compared to the softer wavy hair, lighter colour palette and soft glow my custom conveys. Saying that though, I do think that this year's version of Aurora is absolutely stunning in her own unique way and is a step closer to perfect in my eyes. Articulation wise, Aurora here can rotate her head completely 360, tilt it up, down and side to side. Her arms can also be rotated completely 360 as well as be pushed up. She has about 90 degree range in the elbow. Her elbow joint can also be rotated completely 360 along with her hands and her hands can be tilted up and down. As for legs, Aurora can be moved forward, back. She can as well do the splits. And lastly, she has rubber click knees that can click a few times. Overall, I am happy with the Disney Store Aurora. She has fantastic aesthetics with minimal glitter which I like. This year's filigree and gem detailing theme as well is really beautiful and adds an extra pop to Aurora's simple gown. The dress though not 100% perfect is a nice representation of her iconic look and the new slight changes in her face paint and curled hair are a happy welcome in my eyes since now they appear to be moving closer to her original design. Articulation sadly is a letdown though, continuing to be very limited in her legs, prohibiting her from getting into any dynamic poses. All in all, Aurora is looking as gorgeous as ever this year and I have very little to be unhappy about. I would even go to say that this is the most accurate Disney Store Aurora doll that has been released to date and if you don't already have an Aurora doll, just want to update or like this year's outfit, then this is the doll for you. I highly recommend the Disney Store Aurora for any Aurora, Sleeping Beauty, or Disney Princess enthusiasts in general. And until next time, I will see you guys soon. Bye.